in the carbon removal industry, is there going to be one winner or many winners? I think it's a really important point and I want to talk more about it. So I often meet startup teams that seem to say they are this one-stop shop for carbon removal. They have plans to grab onto carbon molecules, store them, do something with them, and kind of you don't need to go anywhere else. They've got this whole thing covered. The challenge I have is that the assumption there is that there's going to be one winner in carbon removal. I see it more like there's going to be many winners. I think this is going to be a really big industry and we're going to need a wide range of companies and solutions to make that industry succeed. To get to gigaton scale carbon removal, I kind of think of it like a baseball team. We're going to need to have pitchers, we're going to have catchers, we're going to have batters. You're going to need all these different roles and you don't want the catcher to be the pitcher and the pitcher isn't very good at catching balls. Another way to think about it is the computer industry. I think there's going to be an Intel of carbon removal. There's going to be an Apple of carbon removal. There's going to be a Samsung, Hitachi, all the other companies that make pieces of what creates the solution. In this case, that solution is gigaton scale carbon removal. And the Air Miners Index of companies working in carbon removal is structured like that. There's a section for companies doing capture, sequestration, and products. Capture means getting your hands on carbon dioxide. Sequestration means kind of removing it from the system or storing it for a long time. And products means making something more economical or useful with it. The challenge is that it seems unlikely that one company will be the best at capture, the best at sequestration, and the best at making products. And that's the challenge with this idea that there's going to be one winner is that your company doesn't have to be good at everything, but you do, in order to be part of the future of the carbon removal industry, you do have to be good at at least one thing. Thinking about capture, for example, there's gonna be plenty of really crappy sorbents for direct air capture machines, but there's gonna be a few great ones and they will succeed. But the idea that you're gonna be good at capture, sequestration, and products, when I hear that, I, I kinda think of like a, a restaurant that claims to be really good at Sushi, pizza, and pasta. Oh, they get the, they get the freshest fish. The, the pizza is the tomatoes are flown in from Italy every morning. And the pasta is hand rolled by expert chefs. The challenge for me is I want to believe. I want to believe when I'm hearing teams talk, when I'm hearing teams get started, I want to believe in that, that restaurant that they're going to have the best sushi, the best pizza, the best pasta. But as soon as I start to hear that, you know what, they're their pasta sauce comes from Costco. It makes me, re the whole thing kind of kind of deflates pretty quickly where I'm like, okay, well, what is the one thing that they're actually really good at? And sometimes it turns out that it's kind of a bunch of crappy things put together. Now, I don't think this is absolute. I think you could have a company that was good at capture, good at sequestration and good at products. And we even see some companies that are successful doing this. But I think the ones that we see today that are successful at this, I think there's often a trick where they're either partnering with some of the other pieces kind of behind the scenes, or they're kind of de-risking some of these pieces. For example, let's say you're really good at sequestration, but you're also doing capture. Well, one way to really de-risk that is that they're using plants for carbon capture, right? So you're capturing carbon out of the air using plants, and then you do this really good sequestration stuff. So even some of the companies that are succeeding now who seem to be operating across several of these pieces, there's often something different going on behind the scenes, but they're really just good at this one piece. And kind of the others, they're either working with partners or they're kind of using a solution that, that already exists. So I like the way the Air Miners Index has this organized. Capture, sequestration, and products. We came with that a couple years ago though, so I think it probably needs kind of a, a, a re-up. So I'm curious if people have any thoughts on, on how, to, how to either change those three categories or maybe subdivide them. Um, Airminer Slack, actually, we don't use this categorization. I wonder if that kind of creates some confusion in the, in the industry. It's more divided by topics. So things like soil or oceans or direct air capture. And I almost wonder if we, we reorganized somehow that it would make things uh, better. Uh, because we need to do a better job at painting a picture of what this future industry looks like. And it's something like capture, sequestration, and products. So if you're starting a carbon removal company or you're investing in a carbon removal company, I'd love to hear which of these pieces is your company good at? And if you've been meeting companies or investing in companies or just kind of seeing what's developing in this space, 
I'd love to hear your take on this. Are you seeing companies that are seemingly doing the whole thing? Or are you seeing more that are starting to specialize?